how do you know that your self-defense training is telling you the truth? Keep watching. So really the point of the video today is to look at what defines good self-defense training, what's effective and what's really going to help you. So this video is showing some people training what you've explained to me is the Color System, which is a private company based on the Israeli Krav Maga system. Or? You know, the reason why I like this is because of the emotional component. It's very, very real. I mean, if we look at some other videos, their videos really have been sort of quite controversial. So McDojo Life did a breakdown. <laughs> You're doing fucking things you're not loud. That shows these guys pushing the students to a limit. Yeah, exactly. One which could be questionable ethically, but they're not training them for comfort. Personally, I think this is a great way to train. I think if you're going to train people for self-defense, then you actually have to get the emotional content. Like her expression. Key thing, you can see that. You can see that she's actually experiencing it for real. At least she knows what it feels like to be slapped in the face and berated and shouted at so that when someone's doing it, she's already got... It's like you've said before, the exposure the exposure to these things is what builds the strength. Otherwise, yeah. how can you know how to deal with it if you've never dealt with it? You're going to experience a lot of adrenaline and emotional strain. And if you haven't felt that before in training then when it actually happens, you're going to freeze, you're going to panic. Mm -hmm. And so I think as trainers, people that train, really, people to defend themselves, you, you owe them a responsibility to make it as tough as you can, emotionally, within, obviously within a safe confine, but you've got to push the bound, you have to push the boundaries. This is from a Totally Pointless TV. So this is an example of uh, the other extreme of how ladies are trained in self-defense. Until I go to the dead bug position, he just said. He did say dead bug, bug. Yeah. Which is like an agreed upon, I'm going to be <laughs> pacified by you. I, no one's I, even touching anybody. You can see the distress on my face. And Can't not on you? hers. Her, she's like this. She's smart. She's having a great time. This is what worries me. Anytime you have people that are training that are smiling and they're supposed to be training in a scenario event, mm. it should be, there should be a little bit of stress. Yeah. You shouldn't be smiling. Back to this video, he's literally grabbing her and he is slapping her. As you said, he starts off by immediately initiating her into a stressful, intense, full force environment by slapping her, grabbing her. What I like about this, especially the, the Carlos system, is that they start it with a reality, a realistic scenario. Yeah. You know, the slaps, the pressure, the shouting, the demands, the degrading, weapons. It's, it is it's degrading. Shocking. It's it is to... shocking. But I can tell you, a lot of people would not would not sign up for this. Yeah, because they think it shouldn't be like this. Yeah, they think it should be nice and pretty. So I'll give you another classic example. And again, it's not it's not disparaging the presenter. This isn't about what martial arts better, what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. What this is about is discussing the emotional content of self-defense training. What she's advising that you do in a scenario where you've already sensed that there's danger within your environment mm. of a potential, so she, that you're, as a vic potential victim, you're already triggered by a stranger in your environment. You're feeling a sense of danger. So she's advising this young lady to look ahead 
with a soft gaze, right. walk past someone that's already triggered or alarmed you. Hoping they don't see you because you're in a soft gaze. Exactly, <laughs> looking forward. The point is if someone is potentially dangerous in your environment and mm. they've triggered that internal instinct that uh, you know there's a danger, yeah. one thing you shouldn't be doing is ignoring that per person, looking ahead of you. Mm. You should either be making eye contact with that person straight away. Yep. So they know that you see them mm -hmm. because if you make eye contact with people, the bad guy knows that you see them looking at them. So, so it's, it's enough potentially to it, deter It does them deter initially. people. It's much, it's much more of a stronger effect than you think. Mm. If you look at people that potentially could be quite dangerous towards you, they don't think because at the end of the day, they want an easy victim. So what's the takeaway? Training can't be pretty and it can't be soft and it can't be kind if it's going to be meaningful i think at the end of the day you have to train the mindset of putting yourself in that situation you've got to induce panic in training mm. you've got to feel like you're scared you've got to feel that adrenaline you've got to feel that emotion and if you don't feel that in training then you, that's not going to translate to real self-defense. The minute you're exposed to it in real life, it's going to overwhelm you because you're not familiar with it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're smiling and having fun in training, which don't get me wrong, it's not a bad thing to have, but if we're actually training mm. to get the job done, then I need to be able to get the job done. And that's the most important thing. But above that, eyes, 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 <laughs> knee, knee, knee. And the dead, dead bug. bug. Until position. he's in the dead bug, you don't stop kneeing. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>